There is this passage over in the Old Testament, and, and it goes like this. Watchman, watchman, what of the night? And that passage, that verse of Scripture, and that question is a question we ought to be asking today because this was a watchman on the wall. And what was he watching for? Any dangers that were approaching the city? Is there someone encroaching upon the wall? Is there an army coming? Is there danger of any kind? And I think today what we need more than anything else are watchmen on the wall. And, and the watchmen need to be able to answer in a very positive way. Everything's fine. The night is here, but the day is coming, is what the watchman said. So what does that tell us about the day in which we're living? There are danger signs all around us. As a matter of fact, I, I kind of like to wave a red flag right now because you see our country is under attack like it never has been before. The very foundation of our government, which is one governmental system which believes in justice for all, that believes in all men are created equal. All men are treated justly by our Constitution. Those very fundamental facts are under fire. And there are people who want to change the Constitution, which is the greatest document to govern human people in history, in the world's history. Nations around the world would give anything to have a Constitution like that. And while many times it has been comp copied, it, it really has never been duplicated. It's been imitated. So when we come to this country and who we are and, and why we exist, we must look at our foundation. We're coming up on July the 4th. We're coming up on the celebration of the birth of this nation as far as its independence is concerned, Independence Day. And we declared our independence. We became a nation. We became a country. We were founded upon the tenets of God's Word. Forty percent of our founding documents are either direct or indirect quotes coming right out of Scripture. So I would just remind you today about this great nation called America, which has always been a Christian nation, which very fast is becoming a not-so-Christian nation. We, we, we need to wake up. We need to wave a red flag. There is an alarm in our nation. Our children are under attack like never before. We have never seen such nonsense. We've never seen such insanity as we see today. And at some point, we must say stop. Call a timeout. Rethink this. People need to get registered. People need to go vote. It's a sad thing when only one in three people in this country will vote, sometimes one in four, of eligible voters. 35 million Americans who are born-again Christians didn't vote in the last presidential election. That's an alarming statistic. More than half of them were not even registered to vote, and the others were registered and did not vote. And so, in essence, we... We get the government we didn't vote for, and that's a very sad thing. So what do we do? What, what's the solution? What's the positive thing here? I, I go back to the book of Genesis because I, I love the first three chapters of the book of Genesis. In those three chapters, you can find just about every principle you need to live a wonderful life upon the face of this earth. If we go right back into the beginning chapter, chapter 1, when God created man and woman and put them in the garden, he placed them in the garden. It's really interesting what that word says there. It says God put them or placed them in the garden, and it actually refers to a Sabbath day of rest. He put man there to enjoy the beauty of the perfection of the garden and the relationship that God would have with him. And the next thing that God did was he didn't speak to him. He gave man his presence. People all the time are asking me, how do I hear from God? How do I know God is speaking to me? How do I get a word from God? And those are very, very important questions. But could I just tell you something today? God is more interested in his presence with you and in you than he is in speaking any word to you. Because with the presence of God, you get all that God is. You get Father, Son, and Holy Spirit living, I call it, a royal resident inside of us, living inside of us. He, he, he created us as spirit beings. He literally developed us so that we would be spirit, soul, and body. And so you and I live on the face of the earth with this spirit part of us, 
which God made for himself. The Bible says it's dead in trespasses and sins until you come to the place that you know God. I would encourage you today, my friend, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever your political persuasion is, whether or not you even believe in God or the Bible, I would suggest, actually, I'll go further than that. I would actually look you in the eye and tell you, if you want to live your highest life, why don't you seek after the presence of God? If you ever experience God's presence, you will never be the same again. It is transforming. It is powerful. It is empowering. Just a few seconds in the presence of God could transform your life. The presence of God brings deliverance. The presence of God brings salvation. The presence of God brings healing. Everything that God is comes through his presence. His presence is with us in the form of Jesus Christ. He was called Emmanuel. God with us, or if you will, the presence of God with us. So what does America need? And what is the answer to all the dilemma that I just focused on with you in the first part of this particular podcast? The answer, the solution is that we come back to the basic tenet of faith that said in the very beginning, the very first relationship God had with man was not speaking words to him, but his presence. And the answer to this nation is the presence of God. It must start in our homes with our families. It must be in our churches. Church must not be a place that we go for some kind of show or performance. It must be about the presence of God. That's why at the church, we focus on the presence of God. When people come, we want them to know God's presence in this place.